my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Today we celebrate the most holy trinity. The triune God is so familiar to all of us. We rise in the morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We retire to rest in the evening in the name of the triune God. We are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We begin the celebration of the Holy Eucharist in the name of the triune God. Beginning all our activities in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is a revered practice in our lives from time immemorial. We believe that devotion to the triune God ensures success and happiness in all our activities. The Gospel today tells us that before his ascension, Jesus commanded his disciples to go and to preach to all nations and baptize the people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus did not try to explain the concept of the Trinity, nor did he give a discourse on the triune God during his public life. Perhaps Jesus wanted his disciples to experience the persons of the Trinity through their relationship with him. From the very beginning, the teachers in the Catholic Church spoke with great familiarity about the one God in three persons. But it took almost 400 years of hard intellectual struggle for the Church to be able to set in clear language the theological truth about the Trinity. What is really the most holy Trinity that we celebrate today? The Catechism classes, we are taught that there is one God and in this one God there are three persons. All these three persons, though distinct from each other, are equally good, wise and powerful. Yet not three, but only one God. To describe and explain the Trinity fully, it's an impossible task because it cannot be fully experienced by the human mind unless revealed by God himself. There was a bishop in Northern America, Africa, named Augustine. Holy and wise he was. He wanted to understand how the three persons of the Trinity can be one reality and yet distinct. As he was breaking his head, thinking about it seriously, he came across a child on a seashore who made a hole in the sand and was busy filling the hole with the seawater. The bishop asked, my child, what are you doing? The child replied, I am trying to empty the seawater into the hole. The bishop retorted, but don't you know that it is not possible and you are being foolish to try such impossible things? The child replied, but is it not exactly what you are trying to do, Bishop? God is like this, vast sea, and your mind is as small as this hole I have dug in the sand. So give it up, Bishop. You will never grasp how God can be one in three persons and the child disappeared. He was an angel with the message for all of us that no one can fully understand who God really is. If so, my dear brothers and sisters, how can we meaningfully understand the dogma of the Trinity and live it in our life? I place before you two simple considerations. One. The concept of the Trinity, concept of God as Trinity challenges us to live like God in perfect love relationship with one another. Each one of us is a unique being with different abilities and talents. Some of us are men, some are women. We are rich and poor. Yet with all these differences, as believers, we are called to be united in mind and heart 
as the early Christians were. We are united to build a community consciousness that will resemble the nature of the triune God. We are living in a peculiar and difficult time of the COVID pandemic. When we are faced with such pandemics and epidemics and other natural calamities like floods or storms, we become equals because of our desire to escape and survive. We become truly brothers and sisters like the early Christian community. Perhaps inspired by the Trinity, we create a we feeling, which is a beautiful and sustainable model for human existence on the face of the earth. It's a wonderful example of what our belief in the Trinity can do to us. We become a community of love. We who are many can be one in love. Two, St. Augustine as the Bishop of Hippo after years of study, meditation and writing more than 15 books on the subject of the Holy Trinity said, it is difficult to contemplate and to fully comprehend the substance of God. The doctrine of the Holy Trinity is difficult for human mind to understand fully. We are called therefore to believe it. And belief is a gift and this gift has to be accepted and lived on the merit of the word of God. The truth of the Trinity is revealed only in the Bible. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Let us make man in our own image and likeness. The fathers of the church are of the opinion that the use of us refers to the triune nature of God. For St. Augustine, this Old Testament declaration is the same as the New Testament declaration that God is a trinity. Again, St. Augustine saw the trinitarian aspect of God reflected in the memory, understanding and will of human soul. As a man's memory, will and understanding are three faculties, yet one soul, so the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit are three persons, yet one God. Dear brothers and sisters, the triune God is the source and summit of Christian life. Our endeavor should therefore always be to live in the influence of the triune God and be true and living children of our Father in heaven. The Bible tells us God is love. 1 John 4, 8. As Trinity, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit love one another completely and entirely. Love is truly the God's essence, God's inner life, the inner dynamism of the triune God. God loves us and he wants us to know him. God created us out of love and we are created for love. Faith in the Trinity is not merely a doctrine, but a dogma that shows us how God is and who we are as creatures made in His image. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, as we celebrate the Most Holy Trinity, let's pray for a deeper understanding of the, Trinity, of the mystery of the Trinity, of the Triune God. May God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday. For further updates, subscribe to our channel and please click on the bell icon. Thanks for watching.